darkness. Like these guys thinking, well, because I have sin in me all the time, then it's causing me to commit the act of sin on a daily basis. Thought, word, and deed, as they always say. Again, just the simple fact of a scriptural statement settles the issue. First John 1 a should be said if I ne- should be stated if I say I have never sinned, because it's speaking to the Gnostics of the day. Then we could solve this problem entirely. But see, you won't accept it. You think that you can be in darkness and light. You think that you can have sin dwelling in you, that your eye can be bad and good, and that you can still be a slave to sin and a servant to righteousness at the same time because of the magic cloak in Jesus. So I already read that passage. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not, do not know the truth. But if we walk in the light as he in the light, we can have fellowship one with another, and then the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Yeah, because we're in the light, because we're not sinning. We can't be having sin in us and be cleansed of sin at the same time. You see the the illogic in that? That's the crux of the matter here. If you're walking in darkness, producing sin, you're getting drunk once a week. You're looking at a little bit of pornography every once in a while, a couple times a month. You're lusting all the time. You're going out with the boys and doing, doing all these immoral acts then you're not producing the fruit of righteousness in your life. You're lying to yourself, and there's really no truth in you. Not in us. There's no truth in you. Because if anybody that says he has his commandments and doesn't keep them is a liar, and there's, there's no truth in him. John says in the very next chapter, in chapter 2. So you cannot possibly have a safe cleansing cover while you're walking around in the commission of known and deliberate sin all day long. That would contradict everything that Jesus said in in what John's trying to convey here, that if you sin, you're of the devil. If you're producing sin, the fruit of sin in your life, you're you're the bad tree producing bad fruit. You have to lay the ax to the root of that tree in repentance. It's like the Matthew chapter 6, verse 22 and 23. The light, of, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore the eye is single or good, this is the King James Version, then the whole body is full of light. But if the eye is bad or evil, then the whole body is full of darkness. So if therefore the light in you, the light that you can claim because you can sin confess all the time, is darkness, really, because you're in a commission of sin, how great is that darkness? That's what he's saying here. That's exactly the same thing he's saying. So if you could merely sin, confess, sin, confess all day long or daily in your life because you're committing sins of disqualification, like I said, I'm assuming the worst always because that's what they defend always. They're not telling me it's just a mistake in judgment or I messed up, I got a little bit angry with my kids. or They're not telling me that because they believe all sins are the same. Anyway, they won't make any distinctions between sins unto death or sins not unto death, like John, 1 John 5.16 says. So what you're doing, you're making Christ a minister of sin. And worse, you're trampling his blood. because You're claiming to be a Christian. Hey, Hebrews 10 is talking to real Christians there, not to people that were never saved to begin with. You're insulting the spirit of grace. You're trampling the blood. And no sacrifice remains for you. So you're counting it as a common thing that's not able to take away sin. If the blood can cleanse you of all sin, why are you still committing it all the time? You see the ill logic in this? Repentance is a forsaking of sin, not confessing it. He who confesses and forsakes his sins will find mercy. Not just merely confess, confess, confess. John knew that. He could not possibly be saying in verse 9 that you can just confess your sins all the time, no matter how vile they are, and you just pick up where you left off. He could not possibly have said such a thing. It doesn't add up with anything in the scripture. Nothing that the scriptures teach. See, rather than saying there's no truth in a person who will not admit constantly that there's sin in them all day long, why not admit there's no truth in you for not keeping what he said to do, to go and sin no more? He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So who's the liar again? 
You walk in in darkness thinking you're in the light. You're a liar. You're not doing what he said, go and sin no more. Commit them vile sins unto death. You're a liar. So where does the finger point when you point it at us? We're preaching sinless perfection. I'm not preaching sinless perfection. But can't you be free from sins that will cause ruin to your life? And if you commit such things as a real Christian, you're in dire circumstances. That's what the scriptures teach. Not me. That's what the scriptures teach. God forbid you fall into those kind of sins. Because recovery is not going to be easy. See, the concept of presumptuous and non-presumptuous sins or sins of ignorance is lost to the present day people. Because they all sins are the same. And past, present, because of the penal substitution nonsense. That it was all done for you. That's the reason. But it was present in the minds of the apostles because they didn't, they didn't hold to that type of theology. There was, no, there was no theology like that in their minds. See, there's a big difference in John's mind between sins done in ignorance, mistakes and missteps, like Galatians chapter 1, 6, verse 1, and uh, James 5, 16. If a brother's caught in a sin or a fault or a misstep, and sinning willfully against your knowledge of the truth, as I kept pointing out in Hebrews 10. Numbers 15 talks about for sinning presumptuously and being cut off. But sins done in ignorance were the ones that they could make atonement for. The ones that they could take into the temple and offer a sacrifice. Sins done for willfully, it was death. The day of atonement was for sins done in ignorance, the Bible teaches. The sins done in ignorance, the, the little slip-ups they made in the ceremonies, the washings they didn't complete properly. The the Sabbaths, they didn't, they didn't uh, perform precisely as Moses pointed out. Things like that. Adultery and fornication and uncleanness and murder. Those people wouldn't be around for the Day of Atonement. See, John's talking about confessing your mistakes, your faults. Sometimes translated trespass in Scripture. See, even use, he, even use, he uses the word harmatia here in 1 John 1, 9, sin. Which is simply sin, offense. Just, just look it up. Tre but trespass and trespass, fault, and offense are used in Scripture with both types of sin. So the trespass, like in, in uh, Galatians six one, where it talks about if a brother's misstep, if he if he if he's caught in a fault, you should help you should help this brother. See, there it uses a different word. It's like a deviation from the truth. It's like par parmatoa. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right or not. I didn't check. But also, it can be used in both senses. I'm saying these, both of these words are interchangeable in the scriptures. Sometimes it's used harmatia, sin. Simply sin. An offense. You can look it up. You can, you can see all the instances where it's used if you doubt what I'm saying. The harmatia in this other word is used in a wide range of uses throughout scripture. So you have to examine what the writer is saying very closely in each passage to understand the meaning like we're doing here in 1 John 1. John by no means is, is telling a Christian that they can sin willfully uh, against their knowledge of the truth daily and that they're always going to have sin in them and if they just merely confess that and go along and hope for the best and just remember to keep doing that you know, so you'll be on the confessed side when you, you know, when you meet up with God. Well, then, you know, you, you can hope for the best. You just confess as you go along. And always remember to do it. What's the difference between that and the Catholics? They go to confession once a week or whatever. You don't want to be caught in death with an unc unconfessed sin. Well, see, because you look at these sins unto death lightly. Instead of a serious matter of being separated from God and subject to a second repentance. If indeed you did your first. It's a very serious matter. You don't confess while you go along. Because you're not committing vile acts of sin as born again. He that is born of God sinneth not. He keepeth himself and the wicked one touches him not. First John 5.18 See, it doesn't say anything, anything in that passage, anything in that passage about practicing. He sinneth not. He's not producing the fruit of sin that would disqualify from the, from him the, from the kingdom. So like I say, although we'll never be perfect in knowledge or free from ignorance, but we'll be free from the corrupting influence 
in the actual commission of vile sins of the flesh that we crucified in repentance, cast the 